Okay, good morning. If God knows all things that can be known, he knows our future. If he doesn't, we're in big trouble. Therefore, how do we pray for someone who has recently been diagnosed with cancer that may or may not be terminal? Well, God ordains the means and the ends. The means towards the salvation of mankind, that's the end, is the preaching of the gospel. And the means to the healing of the sick is by prayer and by meeting God's requirements in the scripture. Now, we have healings in our Bible class here all the time. We don't go out and blow trumpets out side and tell everybody about it because if we started to we'd have we'd be having the class out on the lawn because there'd be that many people we're not trying to attract attention to it but there are people sitting here this morning that have been miraculously healed in this bible class put up your hands you've come down you've put your, you've been anointed with oil now we just have a great turnover in the class regularly but there's people right here i've got people that were healed instantly of nicotine addiction smoked for 30 years came into the class one morning said i can't take it anymore anointed them with oil in the name of the Lord, and they haven't smoked a cigarette again. We have alcoholics that have the same problem, drug addicts. We had a drug addict who worked for the Christian Research Institute and uh, had a remarkable conversion experience. And then God just took heroin away instantaneously. No cold turkey, no shaking, no perspiration, no screaming, no cramps, no howls, no flying beetles and crawling snakes or anything at all. Just... Jesus Christ gave peace. It was gone. The addiction just disappeared. Now, we have this happening all the time in divine healing. And uh, so we have to encourage this. We have to believe in this in the Lord's work. And we have to encourage people uh, where prayer is concerned that if you want healing, you should ask God for healing and let God make the choice. And then do everything that you're supposed to do to be sure that you haven't left anything undone. If God says, call for the elders and be anointed with oil in the name of the Lord, don't improve upon him and say, well, that really isn't necessary in our day. We'll just have prayer. No, you'll never know what God would have done if you do not do everything God said to do. That's something always to remember. You'll never know. But if you do everything God said to do and had the faith to trust him for it, and the decision is his. If the person dies... You know that you have done everything possible and it was their time. But many times God intervenes in a remarkable way and heals. My son Daniel was miraculously healed of rheumatic fever, diagnosed, being treated for it, and uh, he was, we prayed for him and uh, God didn't heal him. A friend of mine was in town and I knew he exercised the gift of healing on occasion, remarkably. And I said, would you come over and see if the gift of healing will operate for my son? He said, well, you can pray for him. He says, the Lord uses you too. I said, yeah, but maybe I'm too close to the forest to see the trees. I mean, maybe this is something you have to do. God has to use you to do. He came over. He laid hands on Daniel. Danny was healed in 30 seconds. The fever broke. He perspired through his pajamas. Uh, he was shaking all over. And... He looked up after he, we finished praying, or Bob finished praying for him, and said, uh, gee, I'd like to go outside and play now. <laughs> Here's a kid that couldn't move his joints, that was taking penicillin, that was uh, 30 seconds before a diagnosed rheumatic fever case. The rest of his life, he's going to live on penicillin. We took him back, ran him through all the tests. The doctor took his glasses off and cried. He says, I'm a Roman Catholic. I don't go to church, but I support Billy Graham. I said, well, that's good. Glad you do that. <laughs> he says, but I want you to know, I'm going back to church again now. He says, because I've heard about this in my, in my healing work as a doctor for years. I've heard people come and tell me this, Christians particularly. And he said, I just didn't believe it. He said, well, he said, God just rubbed my nose in it this morning. He's crying. He said, I just, I got to thank God for that. He said, it's a miracle. So I've seen these things happen. I prayed for some people, they got sicker. I prayed for others, they died. And I prayed for others, and they were miraculously healed. So God says, do it. And if you get a bonus along the way, when he talks to you and says, I'm going to heal this one, and you know it in advance, that's even better. He's done that for me sometimes. But most of the time, it's do what I tell you to do. And then let me make the decision. And then that saves a lot of recriminations. Uh, as a friend of mine used to say, don't be embarrassed to pray for the sick. It's God's kingdom. He should worry.
In other words, don't be embarrassed about what's happening. If any embarrassment is going to engender, it's to God because he's the one who has to make the decision. You just do what you're supposed to do and don't feel embarrassed about it. So I would say pray for that person's healing. And most of all, if they're not a Christian, pray for their salvation. But if they are a Christian, pray for their healing that they may be used of God. But there are people God wants sick. You say, how do you know that? Because the scripture teaches that. And there are some people God wants dead. And all the prayer in the world and all the faith claiming and teaching and positive confession and, and positive thinking isn't going to save them because that's their time. There is a time to be born, says Solomon, and there is a time to what? Die, you see. You say, well, does God really want some people sick? Yes, 1 Corinthians 11. He wants them sick to learn a lesson. Sometimes people don't learn anything except by getting sick, and I'm one of them. I was pushing myself to death a few years ago, and the Lord slapped me down in a hospital bed. The doctors came in and stood around my bed, six of them, with long faces. I thought, well, this is it. I've had it. <laughs> Big long. I didn't feel badly about it at all. I mean, after all, absent from the body, ho at home with the Lord, that wouldn't bother me any. I was just worried about how it was going to happen. And here are these, this big major clinic and six doctors standing there and long faces reading off these reports and everything. One of them said, Dr. Martin, for a man who has so consistently abused his body for so long, you're in remarkably good shape. <laughs> Praise the Lord for that. And uh, they slowed me down. I, I wouldn't have learned had I not been there. And uh, I praise God for that. So you have to learn lessons sometimes the hard way. 